For more on this, I'd like to bring in Nashville District 19 Council Member Jacob Coopin. Uh, Councilman, thank you so much for giving us some of your time. Uh, we know obviously Riley was intoxicated. He was kicked out of a downtown Nashville bar. He was seen on surveillance video stumbling, disappeared. Weeks later, his body was recovered uh, in the river there. Do you think that this Riley Strain Act is needed? Well, thanks for having me. Um, you know, I felt very connected to Riley's case as soon as I heard about it. Um, you know, I think the world the world did, right? We all saw ourselves in Riley, someone who was leaving a bar after having, you know, maybe too much to drink um, and trying to find his way home. And of course it ended so tragically. Um, and immediately after that happened, we already got to work on potential fixes. Um, and so I do have a piece of legislation working through our council right now, asking for additional safety and security along the riverfront where, uh, where he did disappear. Um, and was also in um, contact with the bars and restaurants downtown and some of the associations to answer this question, right? What do we do when someone is too intoxicated to be in an establishment? How do we make sure they get home safely? Um, and additionally, we're looking at third party partners, right? One of the big questions that's come up is when that person leaves, if their phone is dead, if they're not with their friends, what can we do to make sure they get home safely um, and to not see an incident like this ever happen again? Absolutely. I know you are also working on that legislation. Uh, you know, as you as you mentioned, you've spoken with police, you've spoken with downtown bar owners uh, since Riley's death, uh, the recovery of his body. Is there something that that had continued to come up during those conversations? Is there kind of a through line? Yeah, a couple of things. I mean, one of the things we've been working on as a city is a program called Safe Bar um, through our sexual assault center, which trains bartenders to look for, you know, drugs being put into drinks and to keep people safe. Um, so that's been going on since before this happened and continuing to grow in participation downtown. Um, but I think the big thing that, that came up out of these conversations is kind of that gap between, you know, what does somebody do when they are asked to leave a bar in a, in a city they may not know where they are? How do they get their phone charged? How do they get home safely? How do they weigh fine, right? So those are all things we're looking at um, improving um, I'm glad to see this petition around Riley's Act. It's something that I was thinking about as this was happening and trying to figure out the best way to implement this, um, whether that be legislation or whether that be conversation with these bars, trying to figure out, again, how do we make sure that everyone who comes here, you know, leaves here safely? Um, I do like to tell people that we are a very safe city overall. We have hundreds of thousands of people that come through our city, have a very safe experience, enjoy themselves, get home just fine. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, to me, one death is, is one too many. Absolutely. And let's, let's go back to what we heard, uh, Councilman, from Riley's parents there. Of course, there was no confirmation that anything was actually put in Riley's drink. But, you know, he had texted his mom, said something didn't seem right about it. It, it tasted like barbecue. Did you talk to the bar owners about that? Because we know that can certainly happen anywhere that wouldn't just happen in Nashville. But is there anything that can can be done to try to prevent this? Yeah, and, and so um, early in my term, I learned about the Safe Bar program, which is this training for bartenders. There are coasters that are handed out where you can put your drink on this card to see if something had been put in it. Um, as you mentioned, this is an issue in our whole country, um, but it's something we're actively working on. And in fact, the, some of the bars that Riley was in had just recently gotten trained and certified. So this is something we're continuing to look at. Um, and continuing to to take efforts to make sure people are are safe. Absolutely, and we know Riley's family is understandably still struggling. We know that there is this effort to try to potentially change the laws, introduce new legislation. What would be your message to to Riley's family? So I, I, I've been in touch um, via text message with some of his family uh, throughout this incident, and my my thoughts and prayers and support. First of all, my heart breaks for for what they're going through. Um, and, and the sadness that they're undergoing. And I want people to know that Riley's death won't be in vain. We are gonna work on this. We are gonna make sure that this doesn't happen again. Um, and that I stand here ready to support them in any efforts or things they need. And the city of Nashville stands with Riley. Certainly appreciate your time. Nashville District 19 Council Member Jacob Kubin. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.